It's early morning at a B-29 base in the Marianas. The big bombers are getting ready for a mission, and the men are getting ready. In the essentials, the briefing differs little from others. There's a target that will be bombed. They will proceed to this point in space above the Earth, drop their bombs, and return without ever seeing the target. These are the instructions. The men are ready for the takeoff. Six hours aloft. The huge armada of superforts has spanned over a thousand miles of trackless waters. The weather bears out the forecast. Clouds, heavy overcast, all the way to the target. At 23,000 feet, they're above it. Below and beyond lies the Japanese mainland, and somewhere beyond that, the target. If the enemy took comfort in the thought that the bombardier sees nothing more than this, they were living in a fool's paradise. For at a calculated instant, tons of high explosives, and yes, even the atomic bomb, would be sent away to the target, aimed by the miracle of radar. Before you now is the radar scope, a small circular screen giving X-ray-like vision to the mysterious 11th member of the crew, the radar operator. Until recently, we've known little of what he does, and even less about the instruments he uses. Basically, radar equipment consists of a radio transmitter and receiver. The transmitter sends a radio beam earthward. If it strikes water, the beam is not reflected. The receiver picks up nothing, and the scope appears dark, as it is now over the Pacific Ocean. But if the beam strikes a solid object, such as land, it's reflected and shows light on the scope. Watch. Something's coming in now at the upper left. Adjusting the receiver control sharpens the picture. There they are. Two islands, both with mountains on them. That should make them easy to identify. According to the charts, only two islands of this shape and contour lie off the southern coast of Honshu. The little one, Kojima, the other, Hachijojima. Two tiny dots on the face of the globe point the way for a cargo of destruction. Seven hours, ten minutes, elapsed time. Almost a full day's work for most, but to the crews, a mission less than half sweated out. The picture on the scope warns of entry to the critical zone. The return shows a large landmass, Japanese coast, over a hundred miles of it. You see that bright spot at the top of the peninsula? Not exactly the picture in travel folders, but that's beautiful Fujiyama. Mount Fuji, nature's wonder, the tourist delight. Now a beacon inviting disaster, a reference point for final calculations. Bombardier, this is radar operator, over. This is Bombardier, go ahead. The wind is from two, six, eight degrees at 138 miles per hour. Ground speed on the bomb run, three, nine, four miles per hour. The data taken from the electronic wonder instruments is converted to precision aiming, pinpoint bombing. One seven degrees right. Radar operator, this is Bombardier, over. Go ahead, Bombardier. The site's set up, we're ready to bomb. The bomb run begins with a turn directly over Fujiyama. When the bright spot that is Fuji touches the black line, the instructions are... Pilot, start one quarter needle with turn, rolling out on the heading of... Three one degrees. Roger. Bombardier, open bomb bay doors after turn. Roger. The moment for decision has arrived. The moment when the target must be singled out from hundreds of other invisible targets. Coastline with a large city. A peninsula jutting out in a bay. The city, Tokyo. This is the general target area. 
Northwest of Tokyo lies the specific target, the Kyushu Aircraft Factory at Kawego. A flick of the switch isolates the target image. And here it is, one tiny speck of light, the focal point for hundreds of giant bombers, for a thousand tons of bombs. Pilot, correct nine degrees right. Roger. Ready on 70 degrees. Ready? Mark. Mark. At the split second before the bombs are released, the radar operator sees this. Bombs away. And this is what the Jap sees. His cities, his factories, in ruins. A lot of you out there are probably asking, well, why show us this? The war's over. Well, we wanted to let you in on one of the big secrets of the war. Thought you might be interested. Yes, you're right. The war is over, and we won it. And by we, I mean the foot soldiers, the men at sea, the crews who flew the missions, you men and women who worked in the factories, the scientists who gave us radar and the atomic bomb, and every last man, woman, and child who bought war bonds. That was all part of winning the war. But now there's a matter of the peace. Most of the men in uniform will be returned to civilian life. Likewise, factory workers will go back to producing civilian goods. But our scientists must go on perfecting old inventions and developing new ones for the security of our nation at peace. And you who bought bonds in support of the war effort can buy a share in the peace by investing in bonds today. How about it? <laughs>